Uh, here we have uh, Mozilla Firefox. I'm going to log in now as Bob. Bob's just a regular user in the environment. And uh, luckily, everyone at Contoso has the same exact password. And we'll log in here. And that was exciting. I just dropped the mic. All right. A rich, full experience in, in Firefox, just as it would have been, or just as it is in IE, and also Apple Safari on Macs and other browsers as they become more popular, we continually doing testing. So even though Microsoft created things like Ajax and all these other uh, cool Web 2.0 technologies that really makes Outlook Web App what it is, uh, we, had, we did a lot of work to make it scalable across browsers. We, we want and believe that IE gives you a great value proposition, but sometimes your users may not have the choice of the browser they have, or you know, maybe at home they're using Firefox and you don't want them to lose the anywhere access to, uh, to their, uh, their email, that rich experience. So let's go into Bob's options here. And uh, over in Bob's options, we see, uh, we see, for example, you notice Bob has no choice but only to manage things about himself because he's not been delegated any administrative capabilities, nor has Bob given, been given any capabilities to manage public groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign out. And right from here, I'm going to change the default policy. Whoops, I'm flipping through so much. Po apologize for that. Uh, let's go back here. Stephen, I may be like the bus driver who may have had drank too much this morning. <laughs> so, <with> yes. <laughs> so in this case, we're going to give the, all the users of the environment only the ability to join or leave a distribution group. We only want to give managers uh, in, and supervisors the ability to create new distribution groups. So a little bit of different workflows depending on what policies you may have in your environment. So with that one mouse click and clicking save, I've now affected this policy. And if we go back to our, uh, our Outlook web app here in Firefox, and the only reason why I logged out and logged back in is just to short circuit or speed up the uh, poll, the, the policy refresh. So we're going to go back in here again as Bob. And once more, we're going to go to the options. And voila, just like that, automatically he now has the ability uh, to join or leave an, a, an existing distribution group. Uh, and it automatically shows up within here, and it's very intuitive to use. Uh, and you know, as we go here and we want to join another distribution group, uh, what we'll see here is this is coming again from Active Directory. So if you already have distribution groups, they automatically get populated in. Because what we're doing is adding layers of management on top of it, reading from the directory we've been reading from, from, uh, from quite a while. You don't have to wait for 12 minutes. I, I hope not. <laughs> I can't speak to everybody's deployment, but uh, it should be as instantaneous as your replication cycles are. Join or leave, or also create. So the create one, we, we, you notice we didn't give access to. But if we decided to, it would be, a, it, it would be a, another window that would show up here. So yes, one more question on this one. When joining, uh, does it uh, take any uh, authorization or uh, con uh, consent from a manager? Could be chaotic, yes. So the question was, is there any workflow around joining or leaving a group? Uh, and that's totally up to how the group is configured. So as with before, you can say the group has open membership, uh, requires permission. So if someone joins, you'd get a message saying, this person's joined, you want to allow them to join. Uh, and then lastly, of course, you have a completely closed group, which prevents people from ever even being able to request access. Does that answer your question? So role-based access control, pretty cool? Yes. Something, do you feel a little bit more confident now? Oh yeah, for sure. All right, let me get a quote from you I can use at the launch next week. <laughs> All right, I know we're really tight on time, so I want to spend a few minutes uh, looking at uh, the end user features. Uh, I know there was another question. Do you, do you mind just holding that question for one moment? So I'm going to log back into Outlook Web App again, um, this, this time in Internet Explorer uh, 8, my favorite one. Uh, and. <laughs> Uh, so a couple of things. First, obviously, it looks a little bit different. It's not that color. It's actually a, a little bit more yellow. So, uh, but we did a different color change here. Uh, we continue to try to make the web browsing experience or the web client as close to Outlook as possible. In fact, uh, sometimes there are things that you see uh, in Outlook Web App 
that show up in Outlook uh, client and vice versa. Uh, one of the first things you'll notice, presence is now integrated just like you have in Outlook on the desktop. You have presence integrated now, Office Communication Server 2007 presence. So I can change my status right from here. Uh, we see we have a, my contacts. We automatically import your Office Communicator contacts and the groups. Uh, and I don't think the groups are, are reckon, realized here. Uh, obviously, there's no one online right now for me to chat to. I'd kind of maybe be a little weird to be chatting with myself. But literally, right from here, you can right mouse click uh, and start a chat conversation uh, with another party. It's a very basic chat. It's not a replacement for Office Communicator or uh, the um, or the Office Communicator web access. But what this is, is just to give you access to all of your communication tools, no matter where you can log in. So if you're at that airport kiosk or you're at home, you instantly have this information in front of you. Just like you have your email, uh, you have your voicemail messages, SMS text messages, uh, and the lot are all there. Next thing here, this inbox. Like many folks, Bob has his email organized by the date he received the messages. How many of you organize your inbox chronologically by the date it re it's received? All right, just about everybody, which is very common. Uh, how easy is it, especially after you've been sitting in here for a while, it is it to go back to your inbox and have a sense of what happened while you were out of pocket? Does anyone find a very easy time to go through and you know, look at all these different email messages and go, oh yeah, yeah, oh, okay, I know exactly what's going on. I'll say probably no. I'll speak for myself, but I believe probably the same for you. Well, another new feature in Exchange 2010 is called Conversations. Now, while we've had a conversation view in Exchange and Outlook since Exchange 2003, uh, it wasn't very intelligent and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't very uh, often used. I've been using Conversations forever. I can't actually not read email without Conversations. In this release, we've done a wholesale re-engineering of conversations. And just by flagging that box, we have now taken a seemingly large inbox, which by the way, we had to scroll to see every message in, and collapsed it down automatically into more natural conversations. So just looking at the message list side, we can see here we have the topic of the conversation. Uh, we have uh, in the parentheses here an indication of how many messages are unread in the conversation. Take a look at the preview pane side. We've completely stripped out an Outlook web app all the extraneous details from all the messages in this conversation. So for example here, you don't see the reply text. You know when you get reply and then you see all the text from the previous reply. You don't see the message headers with the 8,000 people in there. It's very clean. You also have the ability to uh, understand the flow of a conversation. So you, it may be tough to see, but you see this gray line going up. Is everyone able to see that, especially the back row? Uh, this pipe shows you the relationship of all the different messages, because there's nothing worse when someone replied to a message that has already been 10 more replies after that, and trying to figure out where their piece fits in. Um, and here, again, we give you little hints too. So in this case, we know that this message from Shane is replying to Elizabeth's original message uh, and not a, a reply to Arlene. Uh, you, get this, you get a similar experience over here if we expand. Uh, you can see the relationship between messages. That gray bar shows up. All right, you guys ready for my favorite feature of Conversation View? Watch this. I'm going to take Shane Kim's email and I'm going to throw it in this recreation folder. Conversation stays intact. Based on the, the, the search capabilities behind the scenes, uh, the conversation stays intact no matter where they are, even if it spans across folders. So if you go into, say, that folder, which only has one of the four messages in, you still get the entire conversation. Uh, you get indication that's in different lo locations. So here, these messages are in the inbox, so you can see they're, they're denoted as being in the inbox. But if you're what we call a filer, and that's someone who takes their email messages after they read them, put them into a folder, how many people consider themselves filers? It's okay to admit. All right. Very good. Who, who's